Today in Stony Brook, New York, a champion will be crowned. Two teams undefeated. Stony Brook with a powerful running attack will take on the high octane aerial attack of Liberty. Also tied atop the standings with an unblemished conference record. The winner will advance to the FCS playoffs next week. The loser will have to wait another year to reach their dreams. Will the skies light up with bombs from Flames Mike Brown to Chris Summers? Or will the rushing attack of Mesodad and Jakulski of the Seawolves be too much for the Flames defense to handle? Only one team will leave this field today as the Big South champion in advance for a chance to play for the FCS national title. It's the Big South championship football game next. Welcome to Laval Stadium on the campus of Stony Brook University, Stony Brook, New York. It's the Big South Conference Championship game, matching the Liberty Flames against the Stony Brook Seawolves. Winner, take all. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Tilley. Well, it's all come down to this. The top two teams in the conference, unbeaten in league play, 5-0. and They're at the top of just about every statistical category, but only one will emerge as the conference champion and head into the playoffs the other will finish just one win short of a great year. My partner is Ray Jones, and Ray, we could not ask for a better matchup in a championship game. Well, these two teams are the best two teams in the Big South Conference. You said they dominate every statistical category. They're both physical, they're both fast, and they're both very different types of teams. For the past two years, Stony Brook and Liberty tied for the Big South Conference championship. There will be no tie this year. The championship will be decided on the field as it should be. Third down and four. The Flames are at the Seawolves' 26-yard line. Allen goes in motion. Brown. As time goes to the 5-yard line, it's caught. Pat Kelly with the catch at the 8-yard line. Boy, Mike Brown rolling off to his right. Never really gets set. Able to come back on one foot and sling it out to Patrick Kelly. There you see him rolling out. Now watch this throw when he goes up. Off one foot, right on the money. Third and goal. Brown going to keep it. To the end zone. Touchdown. Quarterback option. Brown fakes the pitch and then turns it inside for the touchdown. The senior from Charlottesville, Virginia, scores the first touchdown of the game. First and ten. Essington at quarterback is going to throw, completes it, 30, 35, 40, 45, midfield, still on his feet into the 38-yard line. Chris Millen, the junior from Belrose, New York, the fullback out of the backfield. What a big play here early. Well, I'll tell you, the fullback coming around on kind of a wheel route coming out of the backfield, takes that pass, and there's nobody in front of him but blockers. So he's trying to tip time it. Now watch here at the end. He almost, oh, he almost turns that one back in, but he stumbled and went down. First down from the 39-yard line. That's Jakowski. And he's going all the way. Touchdown. Brock Jakowski, the senior from New York. A hospital transfer. And he does what has done so often at Stony Brook. Breaks a big one and scores. First down and 10 for the Seawolves, 26-yard line. Essington to throw, and it's caught. Norrell, 10, 5, touchdown. Kevin Norrell with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. Liberty gets caught in a run blitz to the near side of the field. And that leaves the receiver open. Linebackers blitzing, picked up. As he did right, rolls left, fires it off. Zone is beat, and then into the end zone. And his flames trail, Stony Brook, as we get set to begin the second quarter. Mike Brown wants to throw. Summers makes the catch at the 26-yard line. Brown finds Summers, and that's a 22-yard gain. And again, Brown takes the hit as he lets the ball go. Pressure just constantly coming at him. Chris Summers has been so closely defended this year. He didn't have quite the numbers 
that he's had in years past. But today, he's an obvious target. He's got it inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Flames. Brown knows who he wants to go to, looking in that direction, fires it off to Summers right between two defenders, Hutchinson and, Mar and Mulrooney. So he splits that zone, and it's first and goal, but about as far away as you can be for first and goal with just past the nine-yard line. Mike Brown, 9 of 14, 139 yards so far in this game. He threw that interception on the last drive, but he's back inside the 10 again. Allen, touchdown. Aldrakis Allen comes back into the lineup. We thought he might have been injured. He goes in from nine yards out, scoring his ninth touchdown of the year. Nice play fake here. Brown hands it off, cuts the other way, and then Aldrakis Allen just, I mean, it was good speed, but there was just no defense out there at all as Stony Brook had overloaded the left side of their line. Mike Brown on third down to Summers, first down, 45, 50, 40, 30, being chased, 15, and to the 12-yard line. Yeah, Reginald Franklin grabbed his ankle, but the Flames have a first down and 10 from the 12. I'll tell you what, this, this Brown to Summers connection today is unbelievable. It's not a long pass, about 10 yards, catches on a run, breaks the first tackle. Now he's just trying to get his feet moving, and he's, he high steps that one tackle. Watch this coming down the line, right there on the ankle, just tripped him up. That was a Franklin able to dive in and hang on to the ankle. Flames are going to face another third down. Remember, the Flames came into this game as the second best team in third down conversions this year in all of FCS. Brown wants to throw, caught, touchdown, Aldrakis Allen. Brown was hammered when he released the ball, but he's off the field okay. And Allen's got the touchdown catch, and the Flames have regained the lead. Grant Nukwasa absolutely crushes Mike Brown. He puts him right to his back. He lets it go, gets hit right there, but look at this. Right into Allen's hands, open in the end zone. First down and 10. The Seawolves are now in Flames territory. Essendon wants to throw, and he's looking long, and it's complete! Ten! Touchdown! Grava with the touchdown. Matt Brevy, the senior from Tampa, Florida, with his fifth touchdown of the year. I talked about earlier, you can't ignore Essington. He can throw the ball. He gets good protection, has plenty of time, got two pancake blocks on the line. Right here, it's completed. The defender goes flying by. Touchdown for the Seawolves. Remember, Mike Brown is the holder. Yeah, this will be a 45-yard attempt for Alex Kassiri. His longest this year is 42 to tie the game. It's good. good. The freshman place kicker comes in and ties the game at 24 all. Stony Brook now is facing a second down and nine. They're at the 14 yard line. Kyle Essington, the quarterback. He's going to keep it. He's going to throw. Looking to the end zone. Looking to Tchaikovsky. Touchdown. Rob Tchaikovsky with the touchdown catch, and Stony Brook has regained the lead. The senior from Shirley, New York. Well, he just steps back, gets good protection. He knows he wants to put it where only one guy can catch it, Jakolski. It's second down and 15 now for the Flames. Mike Brown, motion by B.J. Hayes. Brown's going to keep it, follows Allen. Five, touchdown, Mike Brown. Mike Brown takes it in. So the legs of Mike Brown get the score. There's the fake, and he's going to follow Allen, then just start looking. Allen, great block, by the way, takes a man out, and then Brown gets hit right at the goal line, gets the score. Stoney Brook scores 83% of the time. They're inside the red zone this year. They're at the 15. Essington 
wants the pass. Looking, it's caught. Fighting for the end zone and coming up a bit short to the one yard line. And it's difficult to see who the receiver is uh, from here with the jersey. Is that Norell again or Brevy? Looks like it's Brevy. Again, the, the play fake there. Looking down the field. Well thrown. Brevy turns to get the ball. Just stopped short of the end zone by Chris Mayo. But now first and goal from the one. That was a 16-yard play. Stony Brook, first and goal. Mason F, touchdown. Miguel Mason F scores, and Stony Brook is back on top. So trying to keep Stony Brook from getting one yard is very difficult. Masonette turns it up and just lowers his shoulder. Rick Schuster has his helmet popped off on the end of the play there. Flames are going to face a third down and four. The crowd here is on its feet. Brown going to try to get it on his own. He's still on his feet. He may have the first down. I believe he does. That extra effort. But did he did he fumble? Stony Brook may have recovered a fumble here. The referees are huddling. And they Stony are. Brook has recovered the fumble. I didn't see it from here. We're going to have to see that again. Mike Brown was able to get to the first down marker. But Stony Brook has recovered the fumble. Well, nice effort. I didn't think there was much there. He gets hit and keeps driving. Oh, no. He was down. From that angle, Mike yeah. Brown was down. No replays in this game, so no challenges. It looked to me that Mike Brown was completely down from this angle. Wesley Skiffington comes in to attempt about a 18-yard field goal from the near hash mark. It's blocked, it, but it's good. It went through anyway. Oh, my goodness. It was blocked at the line of scrimmage, but had enough behind it to go through. And it's now a 10-point lead for Stony Brook. Stony Brook is going to go to the playoffs for the first time ever. They're going to win their first Big South Conference Championship outright. That's it. What a year for Stony Brook. They have won eight games in a row. Well, they came in with a great offensive game plan. They had a balanced attack between passing and running, and it really worked out for them.